Hello, I'm Gaia Vince and welcome to my home museum. Today's object is an ancient Greek bronze sculpture of a deer. Actually, it's a museum reproduction, but it's made in a similar way and of the same material. So the original was solid cast in bronze in the late eighth century BC using the lost wax method. It's in the geometric style um, and it's made, it was made in Sparta, which was famous for its distinctively stylized bronzes. And the rectangular plate that it stands on indicates that the deer may originally have adorned some wooden object or whether it was perhaps attached to an offering tablet. Small bronze animals, most commonly horses, but also deer and cows and birds, were frequent dedications in the shrines and sanctuaries of ancient Greece and they perhaps indicated the wealth or status of the donor. Statuettes like these have been found in abundance in, in major sanctuaries, including the ones at um, Olympia and Delphi and the Acropolis at Athens. Even though it's small, um, figurines like these were considered prestigious, um, prestigious offerings, um, and they were, they were much more precious than their terracotta counterparts, and that's because of the scarcity of bronze. Bronze, which has been oxidised here, was a remarkable invention and it completely transformed societies. So before that they had copper and copper had been discovered probably accidentally when, when potters fired their pots uh, with mineral glazes that deposited little beads of the metal in their kilns. And hard copper blades could cut wood and bone, even stone. Um, the Egyptian pyramids were made by slaves carving stone blocks using copper chisels. But by uh, the third millennium BC, people had discovered that adding tin to copper gave them an even harder and more useful alloy. And bronze opened new trade routes because tin is relatively rare in the Earth's crust. And so it had to be sourced as far away as, as Cornwall in England and all the way across to Afghanistan along tin routes which spread ideas as well as commodities. In fact, tin was the first large scale international trade network and it made a new class of elite very rich. But when these trade routes were abruptly disrupted in 1200 BC by this, um, this wave of invasions by nomadic societies, people had to look for an alternative to bronze and they found it all around. Pretty much every rock contained some iron the most democratic metal. We entered the Iron Age and we've never left it. Bronze became relegated, perhaps elevated to decorative usage, like making statues. And we still use it for this purpose today.